gotta get up, gotta get out. Who grab the world by the throat and shout? Who gotta find it, get us a shell? Who making bread out of nothing but air? Riding high, the head in the ground. See you tomorrow. Yes, yeah, see ya. <laughs> You're too late. We're closed. My name is Mongi, Mongi <laughs> Boswell. Mm -hmm. And I wish to complain about my allowance. At the moment, I'm not collecting enough to buy best quality meat and the economy size aristocratic doggy bickies. <laughs> Even though I'm engaged in protecting the house and family from robbers and thieves, risking my life and suffering extreme job tension, all I get to eat is crap. There you are, Mongi. I've searched everywhere for him. What are you doing here, son? Doing what you told him to. Scrounging. She's always like this. I'll take him home. He's probably overtaxed. Oh, that'll make a change in your house. Well, it's not easy, you know. Guarding our home and our granddad's home. When he's chasing them away from the front, they're coming in the back. When he's chasing them away from the back... They're coming in at the front, I know. Come on then, son. Back to the grindstone. Yeah, he looks thin, doesn't he? Yeah. It's occupational anxiety due to the spiralling down of society and the excess number of redundant robbers. <laughs> Still, he's only a dog. You wouldn't be interested. Fill that in. <laughs> You know, underneath that frosty-faced exterior, there beats a magnanimous heart. I'm out to get you, Mr Boswell. This could be my big chance. You've learned all the tricks, found all the loopholes, studied all the booklets. He can't read. <laughs> I'm trying to sleep. <sighs> oh, Gobbin, he yawns. He makes the Mersey Tunnel look insignificant. You're tired, that's why. No wonder you're tired with all that bonking. It's Julie. I was going to leave at 10 o'clock. She was in one of those funny, quiet moods. I remember when all we used to do was talk, talk, talk. Yeah, now all you do is bonk, bonk, bonk. <laughs> Is that the only word you can find to describe nature's most uplifting experience? Uplifting? In my bunken days, it was too weak to uplift me cup. <laughs> Making love. That's what it's called. That's soppy. Bunken's better. <laughs> well, it might describe what you do, but it certainly doesn't describe Carmen and me. Hey, now, come on, does it matter? Making love describes the emotions, bunking describes the logistics. It's good fun either way. Fun? Oh, God, we're back at the beginning again. What about Dad coming back, eh? The rows will start now. We'll have Dad sitting in the corner like a hamster, trying not to make a noise with his toast. And Mum dropping vegetables on our plates like a dumping truck. <laughs> yeah, we'll lead them to sort it out. Okay, no taking sides. And you, keep it shut. Why don't you all club together and buy me a muzzle? Why don't you go to bed if you're so tired? I'll have to get washed and clean my teeth, won't I? <laughs> oh, there's Mongi. He wants to come in. Yeah, well, I'm off. I've got a long day of nothing tomorrow. Yeah, me too. Better let him in now, Billy. If you're not there by the third park, he'll be off again. Hey, and don't leave the television on. Turn it off. What you do is you put your finger on the off button and you press it. OK? <laughs> right, son.
Billy, what are you doing up? Billy? Mm, what? You've been here all night. Honestly, Billy, you'd fall asleep on a level crossing. You're supposed to have young blood in your veins. Where is it? It's a note from Julie. She must have put it through the door on the way to the station this morning. I thought she was acting funny last night. Dear Billy, I've been worried lately about us living here, about the future for our baby, about the world. I know you try hard, but something in me can't wait. I told you about my friends in London. Well, I've gone down there to see what it's like. Perhaps the streets are paved with hope. I'll phone you when I'm settled. Don't worry about the baby. Love, Julie. It all happens in this family, doesn't it? I'm frightened to open my eyes in the morning in case the house is gone. <laughs> There's no right! I'm the father of that baby. She's kidnapped my child. Oh, now, don't be so overdramatic, Billy. She just got away for a bit, that's all. God bless us and save us. It's like watching the big film. If I was married to her, I'd be the boss. I'd be in charge. She wouldn't be able to do these things. I know, love. That's why you're not married. And what am I going to do now? I've got my sandwich-making business. I'm running around like a blue fly. For what? For her, love, and for your baby. London. What's in London? They're all precautious snobs down there. Pretentious, Billy. They don't even call on one another. They have to make phone calls. You can't go, you is the kettle on, Queen, in London. It's from Julie. She's no right. Ah, well, yes. She's ambitious, isn't she? She wants to try the world on, like a pair of shoes. Till she finds a pair that fit her. There's nothing wrong with that now, son. What about the baby? She's a mother, Billy. You know about mothers. Extra tomato for you for that, Joey. But I'm a father. Of course you are. And fathers are providers. So what you do is you go out there and you provide. What for? Them. Your girl and your baby. Be ready for them when they come back. Meet them at the station with a suit on. And a van that goes. I didn't know she was like this. Of course you knew. She had character, courage, truth. It's why you love her. No, it isn't. I love her because she's got a lovely body. And see her. Yeah. All right, Billy. And when she laughs, her eyes close and her mouth... Opened, Billy. I know, they all do that. <laughs> and it goes all sexy. Billy! Look, what you've got to do is carry on. And when she comes back, be nice to her. I am nice to her. I don't mean ordinary nice, Billy. Women are funny creatures. You've got to be extra nice. I bring her one of my best sandwiches home every day. <laughs> well, men who make cars don't bring their women a car home every day, do they? What I mean is, it's got to be right, Billy. Perfect, even. You know how, when you're combing your hair, if there's a little piece that's not quite right, your whole image is wrong? <laughs> I'm not ready for all this. <laughs> no use being profound with him. He doesn't comb his hair. It's a funny old thing, Mum, isn't it, life? Aveline and Julie have left the fold. Dad's on his way back. Every day, something new. Oh, I hope I'm doing the right thing, Joey, letting your dad come back home. Of course you are, ma'am. It's natural. He's family. He goes through life like Coco the Clown. Give his mind something serious to think about, he liquidises it. <laughs> we'll shape him up, ma'am. Mind me shoes, girl. Mind me shoes. Bloody boss, well, it's you again. All dressed up, eh? Been promoted, have we? In a way, sweetheart. In a way. I Oh, son. Hi, Dad. You're very dark, Ray. What's up? Julie's left me. Gone to London. Gone chasing the rainbows, has she? Well, I've got news for her. They do a U-turn at Watford. She's taking the baby and all. Move over. It won't open. Slammed it. Well, listen, son, 
There comes a time in all our lives when we've got to go. We can explain. Often we leave good for bad, but we've got to go. It's part of the learning process. You'll be driving along the road and suddenly you'll bomb out. You want to stretch. The field over there always seems to have the sun shining on it. I'd never leave Julie. We'll see, son. We'll see. Hey, the good news is we often come back. <sighs> is me breakfast coming or not? I will place your order immediately, Grandad. And I don't want any. Them bees is radioactive. Walking up on my lungs, trying to fight off the stuff that comes out of his car. Down, Freddy Boswell. Back home, eh? Uh, how many kids have we got? <laughs> Three upstairs, one's left home, and one in the car outside. Oh, yeah. Um, ah, Billy, I've had a word. Well, you are an authority, aren't you, on people leaving people? You're like a dog with a postman's trousers, aren't you? You don't expect me to forget Lilo Lil, do you? You don't expect me to forget that morning when you walked out of this house to go to that tart? I've laid in bed at night with Lilo Lil's name burnt on my brain. I have lain there and made elaborate plans to machine gun the entire city in the hope that I might blow Lilo Lil right out of her shameless knickers! Can't we forget Lilo Lil? Don't you dare mention her name in this house! Are we fixed for breakfast? <laughs> well, you've got to make a call. Morning, son. Hi, Dad. You back then? It won't be a minute. Sir Joey finished in the bathroom yet. I don't know. But he's after shave seeping under the door and poisoning us all. Two <laughs> trays, Jack. One to Grandad, and one to our Billy. He's outside sulking in the car. It's great, isn't it? Why don't we all do that? I could have my dinner in the van tonight. <laughs> he's emotionally disturbed, and besides, he's trapped. The car door won't open. Go on. <laughs> oh, Dad. When did you move in, then? He came with the milk. <laughs> Welcome home, Dad. Welcome home. Thanks, son. So where shall I sit, then? Nothing's changed. We sit where we sat. <laughs> Yay! Breakfast! Still the same, isn't she? Got a loud hailer for a gob. <laughs> <laughs> you seen that, son? The body centre. Yeah, smashing. They got a sauna, sun bath, shower, massage. Four quid the lot. I go every week. Hence, the golden look. <laughs> Is it open this afternoon? It's open all the time, son. Open all the time. Well, I've got a cater for the unemployed, haven't he? I mean, being out of work is one thing, but being out of work and pale. Doesn't matter what colour your body is, if your brain's lying on its back, does it? They've got to work. I must say, I'd quite like to get a tan. It's nice to be brown all over, isn't it? And my body's a bit... patchy. Ah, well. There has to be a runt in every litter. There's no runt in my litter. Everyone born whole and strong. The only runt was their father. <laughs> No sense of humour. No sense of humour. She put years on a Ming vase, that one. <laughs> Dad, another chair at the family table. Great. <laughs> Sit here, Dad. Thanks, son. Waiting for you, Dad. Oh, uh, leave me out, if you don't mind. Oh, but we do mind. But I don't pray anymore. You used to pray. Ah, well, <laughs> a lot's happened since then, though, son. Oh, I still believe in God, but in a different way. I know what that means. I mean, you can believe in God without actually chatting him up all the time, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Not you too, Jack. Well, there's no need, ma'am. And anyway, with things the way they are, I don't see how he's got time to listen. Do you know, I must say, I found it hard to keep on believing. What with losing my job, I mean, redundancy money ebbing away and other things of a private nature. My faith has been hanging by a thread. Hanging by a thread. I'm more of a proddy now. A proddy? 
<laughs> well, it got a bit boring, you know, confessing me sins and then going home and doing it again. <laughs> I see. So the rot is setting in, is it? The sheep are beginning to scatter. Joey. Those who want to pray, pray. Those who don't. We thank thee, O oh Lord. <laughs> For all the good things in life, help us to cope with the bad. <laughs> Amen. 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 You see, Father, it's him, my husband. And before you start pontificating about lost souls returning, I think I ought to tell you, Father, he has sinned. The good Lord, my child, is full of sweet forgiveness. It's not an ordinary sin, Father. It's a dreadful sin. There are no good sins, no bad sins, my child. Only sins. I hardly know how to say it. The Lord will forgive. It's, it's such a sin. Fear not, my child. If a man repenteth, the good Lord will forgive him for anything. He's turned Protestant. Except for turning Protestant. <laughs> it was ecstatic. Thank you. When I'm old, I'll think of these moments. With you, in a cornfield, <laughs> in a little room behind the shop, on the sand dunes. In the bushes, by a duck pond. <laughs> Where will I be when you're thinking these things? Oh, you'll be old too. You'll be thinking about them. So we won't be together? We might. We don't know, do we? You'll be with Alan Wentworth, no doubt. He's no more likely than you being with Ellen Poe. You like call women, after all. You deliberately bump into me in the street, then you deliberately find out where I'm going to be and get there before me. Then you taunt me with your, with your, and you steal my body. Steal it? Yeah. <laughs> steal it. Then, after lulling me into a state of adoration, you plan, yeah, plan in front of my very naked self, your future, without me. Since I met you, Carmen, my body is hanging by a thread. <laughs> hanging by a thread. You were wonderful, Adrian. Not to mention your lies. All right. They were lies. <laughs> you are not wonderful. You are not a great pulsating tiger. The earth does not move. <laughs> you don't even know how to do it. Tonight, then. Nah. My friend Janice will babysit. No, I'd rather not. Tomorrow night, then. We'll see. I thought you came down here to find things out. All you're going to find out is what it's like to sit in every night. Well, I can't leave the baby, can I? Well, she won't know, will she? She'll be asleep. Well, she might wake up and see a strange face. It's time my mother woke up and saw a strange face. Oh, you go. I'll be all right. Ralph Connolly will be there. Who's he? We met you at the station. Ralph Rowland and me. Oh, him? <sighs> ah, he fancies you. He's always smiling all the time. I can't stand blokes that are always smiling all the time. It's as if the corners of his mouth are hooked onto his ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, Rowland, then. He'll be there. Don't like him, either. He drives a Porsche. Oh, well, he must be all right, then, if he drives a Porsche. Hang on while I choose my wedding dress. What's a Porsche got to do with it? Well, you can tell a fella's ambitions by the car he drives. I mean, it's like reading his horoscope. Well, in that case, there's no hope for our Billy. Every time he starts his car up, it shuts his skin like a snake. <laughs> <sighs> Why didn't you marry Billy? He's not ready for it. They're never ready for it. You've got to take them by surprise. 
He'd go down that aisle with a daft look on his face. Be like putting a sparrow in a little cage. <laughs> Catch me, Curtin. If I found someone I loved, I'd cram him in that cage, even if he was a bloody eagle. <laughs> <laughs> he comes from a big family. They're very close. I think the mother's related to God. She's only got to nod her head and the universe goes into reverse. <sighs> How many are there? Well, there's the dad, and there's granddad, and there's Jack and Adrian and Aveline, and then there's Joey. Now, Joey was put on this earth to keep the delicate balance of nature. If it wasn't for all his leather gear, we'd be overrun by cows. <laughs> <laughs> and amongst all that lot, there's Billy. He's got curly hair, and he hardly ever laughs. He sounds dull to me. He puts his socks on inside out. Gets his shirt buttoned wrong, bumps into things, talks through the earpiece on the phone. Instead of marrying him, why not adopt him? I've only told you the bad bits. There are good bits then. Yeah. Well, why aren't you up there with him? I had to find things out, didn't I? <laughs> Get it, lad. Come on, do it. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, great, yeah. great. Oh, yeah. Come on, wake up, Billy. <laughs> oh, hey, hey. Daddy. Oops, whoop. Dad. <laughs> this is the third time, you lot. Your dinner is ready. Get it, lad. Come on, do it. I thank thee, O oh Lord, for what I am about to receive. <laughs> And I ask thee to forgive anything which may follow. <laughs> Amen. Sorry. I was with Carmen. She's more important than the family, is she? Oh, well, I am entitled to a private life. <laughs> and what am I entitled to, I wonder? Why have you done this, ma'am? What's the matter? Mm. He's only been back five minutes and he's destroying us already. They're having fun out there. Oh, I know. Jack hasn't done any work. Billy went off in his sandwich round this morning with the most revolting sandwiches I have ever seen. Well, he's upset about Julie. We're all upset about something. Oh, you're right. We're all upset about something. And what does he do about it? Nothing. 
He doesn't say, off you go, Jack. You've got a call to make. Off you go, Billy, but not until you get your sandwiches right. No, he says, when in doubt, get the football out! <laughs> Don't cry, ma'am. You try to do things right, Adrian. And you try to please people. I know, I know. And you put all your heart and strength into it. I know. <laughs> and what do they do? They tell you you're no good at it. <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're, you're a clever lad, Adrian. I mean, you know nothing about life. And there you are, all warm and wise. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> I call them, Joey. I call them at least three times. It's OK, ma'am. It's OK. I'm only sorry. I didn't put something aside for you two. No sweat. No sweat. Oh, I should never have let him come back home. Oh, ma'am, look, it's all right. He'll settle down. He's just like a kid let out of school, that's all. <laughs> More like he's been let out of a nut house. <laughs> it's taken us three years to build this family into some kind of strength again. We've wanted for nothing. We've pulled together, obeyed the rules. And now we're tossing about on a destructive sea with my Aveline overboard and him at the helm! <laughs> oh, God! Thanks every time I kicked it. Years of bringing a family up does that here, son. You'll have to make yesterday's money go round a bit further, won't you, son? Dear ma'am, is it...? Dear ma'am, this is my last fiver. I had to buy a face steamer today. Love, Aveline. I've said prayers. Right. Well, shall we begin? <laughs> gotta get up, gotta get out. Gotta. Grab the world by the throat and shout. <laughs> Buy it. Sell it. The game's getting out. Cos someone's stealing you a losing card. Right, right. 